Okay, today I want to talk to you a little bit about what we call postoperative healing and athletic injury healing. What I want to explain to you is many years ago, uh, this occurred the latter 70s. Uh, TENS machines, which are through the skin electrical nerve stimulators. They were being touted for their ability to put on immediately after a surgical procedure and that the patient would have less pain, spend less medications were, were needed. Uh, bloating was an issue and because of gas pain then you end up, uh, that sets you back. And this was back when people were allowed to sit in the hospital for a week after surgery rather than what we see today where they expect them out basically the day of surgery. And I remember years ago when this was occurring, we had a big seminar and uh, a good friend of mine, Jerry Lampy and uh, Jeff Manheimer had written the book on the use of TENS units for physical therapists and they were stocking. They were doing weekend seminars trying to explain the basics so that the therapy market understood what they were doing with the instruments. And I had a friend who was an anesthesiologist and Dr. Major decided to show up for one of these seminars because they were looking at implementing a post-operative TENS program. And Dr. Major showed up and would go through the seminar and basically didn't really get any answers as to what was going on with why would you use a TENS, what is it doing, uh, is it worth the time. And I remember Dr. Major when we got ready to leave on a Sunday afternoon, I told him, I said, Dr. Major, I'm sorry. Uh, we weren't able to give you the answers you were looking for. And Dr. Major looked at me and he goes, no, Bob. He goes, I know exactly what's going on now. He goes, it's, 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 I understand. I said, well, what is it? He says, it's, it's fairly simple. He says, remember our job is basically a gas passer, which is what an anesthesiologist does is we basically poison a patient until they pass out. But we don't want to over poison them because we're going to kill them. So we reach the point of having them pass out. Well at that moment also our brain quits sending signals to our muscles to maintain tone, to maintain tension. And he goes, and what I think I'm seeing, especially in the abdominal surgery type things, is once these muscles relax coming off of surgery and your body's been poisoned, then we lose the muscle tenseness. And as a result of that, our muscle tenseness, especially in the abdominal area, the reason it's there is to keep some of the gas down and extract it. Well, what you're doing with electricity is I think you're maintaining muscle tone. And that muscle tone is cutting down on some of the pain and blah blah blah. That was his basic answer and I enjoyed that answer. But the other thing was the pain you can use, you can interfere with the pain message. That's one way to do it. If you go to interferential therapy rather than having to use something constantly like you do a TENS unit, you can take interferential and do a 30-45 minute treatment once a day and you have carryover pain relief. But at that time we did not understand that by applying electrons to the body trying to heal itself that we were actually accelerating the rate of repair because in the surgery remember you're ripping apart a lot of things a lot of soft tissue a lot of muscle uh, if it's a bone you may have done something to a bone you may be transplanting a tendon an ACL you can actually go to our website and here's the article right here and you can actually see where this patient ripped up ripped ruptured ACL, medial meniscus, and returned playing basketball in 98 days following surgery. She also used a TENS unit immediately after surgery. She used the Infrex thereafter and we got her up and running. Now the reason I know so much about that article and that person is that was my daughter when she was 17 years old. So we actually, sometimes I actually practice what I preach and that was one of the situations. But one of the things I wanted to go through with you now is when you look here at what I want to show you is there's a lot of patients that need hip, knee, shoulder, 
replacement surgery. And when I'm saying replacement, I'm saying the joint. The reason for the patient even showing up to start off with to see a doctor is at a joint, my crude drawing, here's a bone with a joint, here's another bone, say it's a shoulder. Now, what causes the problem is eventually these bones rub against each other. And when that happens, you start having deterioration of the bone. And that causes pain. Or you can have soft tissue in here that gets impinged. So when you look at this, when the physician looks at this orthopedic surgeon, what they see is this physical impediment. Now, the question, there's a form of therapy. It actually started, whoa, way back, uh, late 60s. There was a guy named uh, Dr. Cotts, and he, there's a couple of spellings of his name. And he did not prov provide a great deal of information on this study he did, but he basically worked with Olympic athletes. And what he did was he would take and have patients do a series of exercises. And then after he had them do the exercises, and just for sake of argument, they did 20 reps. He would then have them continue to exercise, except he would apply Russian stimulation. So nice name, what does Russian stimulation mean? It basically means the machine was going off and on 2,500 times per second. And if you've looked at other videos, you know, pulse per second, CPS, cycles per second, frequency rate, they're all the same thing, how many times the machine going off and on. Well, what actually happened when they did this type of protocol with volitional exercise, you're trying to exercise, you're doing some more exercises, but you're applying this Russian stimulation, 2,500 cycles per second. Uh, he was actually increasing muscle bulk and strength. So if your muscle was only that big, then after they do it and they could look at it and it was that big, and so they were actually getting stronger, and that was called Russian stimulation, or COTS type stimulation. All right, where this got applied, Dr. Giovanni De Domenico, who was the world's foremost guru on interferential, actually started working with the company many years ago, and he was trying to explain how some of the processes work. And one of the things that comes through why today many people are not having to have this type of surgery. It has to be a patient that is eager, that is willing to work to avoid this stuff. One of the things that's going on is the way you keep bone from hitting bone or soft tissue and having pain just is you look what's supporting the bone? It's muscles. The muscle's job is to not allow that joint to rub against itself. So if you start exercising and you use a form of Russian stimulation if you can re regain that muscle strength, and that's a resting muscle strength, then you can eliminate this bone on bone and bone on soft tissue. If you can eliminate that, you eliminate pain. Now, here's the interesting thing. When people look at this and say, well, how does it work? What's going on? electrically that allows that to occur. Well, one of the things that's going on is when you exercise, and here is a muscle, and we have what we call innervation, that's nerves that are going around the muscle, and those nerves actually are a bundle. Now, in that bundle, we have some more nerves. 
and there's one that's that big and there's one that's that big and there's another one that's that big and there's another one that's that big and there's another one that's that big. Alright, when I ask you to exercise, when I ask you to pick your arm up, the way your brain, I'll put our brain over here, uh, let me write it so you know what I'm talking about, there's a brain. Our brain sends electrical signals down to the muscle fiber and it says we need to achieve a function of picking your arm up. Well the natural way that works is the first nerve fibers to fire and try to accomplish the task are your smaller diameter. The ones whose diameters, I'm just going to use the number three just for sake of argument, these guys fire. Well, you may not have to fire the larger diameters, and I'm going to use the number 10, because you can achieve the function without having to activate the larger diameter muscle fibers. Okay, when you start exercising and using infrared stimulation, what you are really doing is now electricity fires motor nerves in reverse of the way the body does. So, but it's important, you cannot sit passively and say, okay electricity, do the job for me. That will not accomplish the task. And this is one of the reasons why it will not accomplish the task. We want you to exercise, we want you to decide, I want to do this, and then you start doing it. Then we're going to apply electricity shooting electrons through you from the outside or exogenous. You've probably seen me use that term quite a bit. Alright, what happens now is the first thing to fire from electricity will be the larger fibers. Then if you turn the power up enough you eventually get to the smaller fibers. But at the end, during that exercise period with electrical stimulation, how many fibers are firing? Basically a hundred percent. If you did the same thing and didn't use electricity and you missed the bigger ones, then you may only be getting 40%. If you do solely electricity alone, then let's just say for argument you're doing 60%. Of course, your argument to me is, well, wait a minute, if I turn the power up enough, I can stimulate all the nerve fibers. But there's something else you've got to remember with electricity. There's some more fibers that are sitting out here, and they are called pain fibers. A controlling factor using electricity is you don't, a patient will not tolerate additional pain. So you have an inhibitor. If you've seen my other videos, remember we always talk circuits. Input in, input out of the brain, the brain needs input back in order to decide what to continue doing. This is one of the reasons that we can now use electrotherapy and we're seeing it. Patients are not having these surgeries and it's simply because of this process. I hope that gives you a little bit of insight into what we're talking about and then on my next video I want to talk to you a little bit about what is the process of basically healing when there's been injury. And we get to that one next. Just, you can go right here. This is where the next video is. Thanks for watching this one. At MedFacts, our priority is to educate and inform on topics such as pain relief, sports performance, injury rehab, nutrition, antioxidants, electron supplementation, and electrotherapy. We carry a complete line of electrotherapy devices and accessories including interferential, 
cans, ultrasound, muscle stimulators, electrodes, and more. We are excited about being on the cutting edge of electrotherapy research. 